I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Save me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was the blood. Save me. Oh, yes, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Save me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was the blood. Save me. Oh, yes, the blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. No, it was the blood for me. Oh, yes, they whipped him all night long. They whipped him all night long. They whipped him all night long for me. One day when I was lost, oh yeah, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Oh yes, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. Well, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Daphne. Good morning, Sister Hamilton. Good morning, Deacon and Mother Wilson. Good morning, Francine. Good morning, Elder Adams. Praise the Lord, Sister Paige. God bless you, Sister Walker. Good morning, Tracy. God bless you, Sister Bailey. God bless you, Brother Stokes. Praise God for you, Sister Margaret. God bless you, Sister Jan. Praise the Lord, Sister Morris. God bless you, Sister Perry. God bless you, Missionary Johnson. Praise the Lord, Sister Chambliss. God bless you. God bless you, Treat. God bless you, Pastor and Lady Alde. God bless you, Sister Brenda. God bless you, Sister Petaway. Praise the Lord, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you, Pastor Hargrove. Thank God for you, sir. God bless you, Sister Yolanda. God bless you, Katrina. God bless you, Sister Cheek. Praise the Lord to you. Praise the Lord, Mother McCall. Praise the Lord, Sister Edmund. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Green, Sister Hedrick, Sister Kathy, Brother Tony. God bless you, Sean. Praise God for you. Sister Deborah, God bless you. Sister Mamie, God bless you, Geneva. God bless you, Rosalind. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Felix. Good morning, Sarah. God bless you, Marie. Good morning, Mother Gill. Praise God for you. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it is an honor, a, pri a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to share a few moments with you in a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things, oh my God, have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And I am continually celebrating the praise reports that continue to come forth through this morning prayer. People being healed, people leaving ICU wards, people receiving new jobs, people walking into blessings and favor and God blessing because somebody is praying. I didn't share this yesterday, but I will share this today. Um, I think almost everybody knows that I work um, as a high school um, administrator. And um, of course, Friday nights, this time of the year are football games. And this past Friday night was homecoming. And, um, you know, you, I, I got to the stadium and I just felt a little bit uneasy, was very watchful. And, and we had a few incidences of kids, you know, misbehaving and fighting and whatnot. And so as we were trying to get every, the game ended, we were trying to get everybody out of the stadium, get them in the cars, get them home so we could go home. Suddenly there was um, gunfire. Yeah, people. And from what I understand from the police reports, people shooting in the air. Two cars pulled up. They just started shooting in the air. And unfortunately, one student was um, struck in the calf, not seriously or life threatening, but was struck by a bullet. First time in my 33 years of um, being an educator that I was involved in a active shooting situation. And as I, w and I was standing at the gate, 
ushering people out when suddenly when the gunfire broke out, they all, of course, came rushing back in for safety and for cover. And I'm thanking God there was a brick wall right there beside me. And I had about two teachers with me and the three of us just stood behind that brick wall and waited for it to pass and for the police to respond. And so I'm thanking God today for being alive just on the um, edge of finishing one year of prayer. Here comes the enemy shooting around me, but I'm thanking God for protection. I'm thanking God that he covers me. I'm thanking God for that daily prayer. Hallelujah. Daily prayer, daily prayer. I know we, we, we take it for granted sometimes, but saints, we ought to be praying daily before we leave our houses, get in our cars and start our day. We ought to be praying and asking God for his protection asking God for his cover, asking God to keep us. And the old church said, Lord, keep us from seeing an unseen danger. Even what I don't see, Lord, keep us and protect us. So I'm thanking God today for protection. I'm thanking God, hallelujah, for covering and protecting me. Hallelujah. And God is so good. When you don't know where the danger is, thank God he knows where the danger is and he knows how to cover us and protect us. But we're thanking God for that. As always, if you have a prayer request, please place it into the chat so we can add those to the prayer list and add those um, to the prayer book, believing God for what we know he is going to do. Um, oh God, one of the things I'm praying for today is if there's somebody that's under stress. As I was getting ready this morning for prayer, the Lord just spoke to me about those who are under stress. And I'm praying for God to relieve that stress for you, for God to deal with the stress and deal with the source of your stress, trusting and believing God for deliverance. The Bible says, be careful or be anxious or don't worry about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, make your request known unto the Lord. So place your prayer request in the chat. If they were of a private nature, please inbox them to me, Reginald Davis, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to go to the word of God this morning. We're still in Colossians. We're wrapping up this um, book of Colossians, this letter of Paul to the Colossian church. And I want to move to verses five and six of the fourth chapter of the book of Colossians. Ch Colossians chapter four, verses five and six. The Bible says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. And I just want to talk today from the thought, walking and speaking. Walking and speaking. You know, so much of the believer's life is attached to how we walk, and how we speak. So much of our impact, so much of what God is able to do with us, through us, and by us is attached to how we walk, how we speak. When the Bible talks about the walk of the saint, it's not per se the literal physical steps, but the life the lifestyle, the behavior. Um, being born again, and, and you've heard me say this, is living a transformed life. And that transformation is demonstrated in the daily walk. What do we do? Where do we go? How do we live? All of those are a part of this walk. Um, our habits, our behaviors, our activities, part of the walk. And I know we don't preach this much anymore and people have stopped believing it, but people watch our walk. Say that again. People watch our walk. They watch how we live our lives daily simply because they are trying to see if we are genuine about our commitment to God, you know, everybody can be saved. And God knows on social media, everybody has, is a 
prophet and a preacher and a this and a that and the other. But the world is watching our walk. In fact, the world is more intent on on the life that we're living more than the rhetoric that we're speaking. Because everybody can learn the church lingo. Everybody can learn the expressions and the idioms that move people in a church setting. But what the world is looking at and what unsaved people, what your family, what your friends are observing is your walk. Do you live the life of a believer? Do you express the character and the integrity and the and, and the love and the genuine caring as a believer. And so what Paul admonishes in this fourth chapter, verse five, he says for each believer to do what? Walk in wisdom. And, and, he, he, and, he, and he expresses it toward them that are without. How are we dealing with people who are outside of the body of Christ? How are we living in front of them? How are we interacting with them? How are we expressing ourselves toward them? And this is not to imply that we should be living this, 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 this pontificating, holier than thou, I'm better than you type of walk. No, this is a humble walk. This is a walk in love. This is a walk in caring. This is a walk in compassion. This is a walk in godly integrity that people can see Christ in you. You know, it, it, it is always more powerful. Listen to me. It is always more powerful when people tell you that you're a saint than for you to tell them that you're a saint. In other words, living a life in such a way until somebody who doesn't know you will look at you and say there is something different about you. There is something godly about you. There is something holy about you. You must be a Christian. You must be a believer. And this is it's so much more powerful when people can tell you that you're a saint than when you have to tell them that you're a saint. There's something such more, much more powerful when people without the hat or the t-shirt or the bumper sticker on your car, but just simply because of how you interact with them, that people see Christ in you. That that's what Jesus said they're supposed to do. Let your light so shine before men that they might do what? See your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Living in such a way until people can see it. And you, we need to remember that's how people are going to be one to Christ. We have to live that life in front of them. And that is walking in wisdom walking in wisdom, walking in spiritual integrity, walking in righteousness and and developing that credibility of the faith that that makes the most of every evangelic opportunity. Every evangelistic opportunity, we ought to be walking in such a way that people can genuinely see Christ. And when they see Christ, follow us. Paul said, "Follow me." Ha, huh, as I follow Christ. Somebody sees your life Somebody sees your behavior. Somebody sees even the way you handle yourself under stress. And I, oh, that's it. This ties in because the Lord spoke to me about people under stress. But how we handle stress, how we manage stress allows people to see Christ in us. When 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 you're pressed and and and, and the line is long and and you're and, and, and you've got and you're in a hurry and you know you're, you're, the traffic is bad and you're not flipping out and going off and losing. It. The, all of those things are, praise our God, evidence of Christ walking in you. How you manage yourself when somebody does something to you that is negative or inappropriate and, 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 and everybody's watching to see how you're going to respond. Are you going to cuss them out? Are you going to go off? Are you going to lose your mind? But you stand there and in integrity, stand up for yourself. Oh God, stand up for yourself. Don't allow them to push you around, but do it in such a way that Christ is seen. Do it in such a way that Christ is exemplified, walking in wisdom toward them that are without. It matters. It matters how we treat people because we never know when we might see them again. The very people you have gone off on, the very people you have been unkind to, the very people you've been cruel to, guess what? You may meet them in church. Oh, God, you may meet. You don't know when you're going to meet them again. You don't know when you're going to see them again. So how we walk before them matters. All right. Redeeming the time. This is saying that we don't have a lot of time, saints. 
to get this gospel out to the world. We don't have a lot of time, saints, to get people prepared for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We do not have a lot of time to continue to engage in things, but we ought to be throwing out the lifeline. We ought to be sending out the, the flare. We ought to be doing whatever we can to bring attention to the fact that people need to be saved. People need to be saved. And we need to live in such a way that we are drawing people to the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. This text is what? Walking and speaking. Look at verse six. Let your speech be always with grace. Let your speech be always with grace. This is a scripture that my wife taught me when we were dating and, and, and I asked her about something that and how, why she handles things a certain way. She quoted this scripture. And, and, and I didn't know it was in the Bible. We were dating and I didn't know it was in the Bible, but she quoted the scripture to me. And this has blessed me. Let your speech be always with what? Grace, always spiritual, always wholesome, always fitting, always kind, always sensitive, always purposeful, always complimentary, always gentle. Let your speech always be truthful and loving and thoughtful. In other words, mind what you say. And understand that your words have power. Let me say that again. Your words have power. Your words have impact. And the same way that your walk matters, your words matter. Mm, let me say it again. The same way your walk matters, your words matter. Some of us have good walks but bad words. Mm, I'm going to say that again. Some of us have good walks but bad words. And I don't mean bad words in the sense of curse words, but some of us are so negative in our speaking. We're so sharp in our talking. We're so, oh God, abrupt in how we deal with people verbally. We are sometimes very unkind. Sometimes we gossip. Sometimes we insult. Sometimes we denigrate people. And, and, and what you say and how you say it matters to people. What you say and how you say matters. James, and if you have time, go back and read the book of James because he talks in detail about the tongue. He talks about how we speak to people and what and what that those words do to people. And so that's why Paul says, let your speech be always with grace. Let it be filled with grace. The grace of God flowing through what you say. The power of your words to change life, to impact people, to encourage, to lift up, to draw, to, to even convict. But it's said in such a way and with such love that the conviction comes from God and not from you. Not from your negativity. Not from your ungodliness. But all Always, always with grace. Oh, God, we are challenged in this day. We are challenged by so many things. And how we respond verbally has such an impact on whether or not people see Christ. Let it be seasoned. Oh, God, seasoned with salt seasoned with salt. In other words, the same way that salt not only was designed for flavor, salt kept things from corruption. Salt kept things from spoiling. That's why Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. So if you're the salt of the earth, then the saltiness, oh God, or the savoriness ought to be in your speech. Ought to be designed to strengthen, to build up. All right. Ought to be designed that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. This is about how we respond, how we respond. And just because somebody comes out of their mouth incorrectly to you, it does not give you the license to come out of your mouth incorrectly to them. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says a soft answer turneth away wrath. I learned this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real about this. I learned this after I became a school administrator, because when you're a school administrator, probably about 75% of the people you deal with are angry, angry students, angry parents, angry teachers. And, and I'll be honest, when I was, you know, just starting in this part of my career, you know, if they gave it to me, I gave it right back to them. And we'd go back and forth and on the phone, go back and forth in my office, you know, our arguing people, leaving my office angry and huffing and puffing. And then the Lord gave me that scripture about a soft answer turning away wrath. And so even though I did not change, if I made a decision that they didn't like, I live with that decision. I answered that decision. I stood by my decision, but the way I said it changed. Hallelujah. I could tell somebody no, but make it sound better. 
I could tell somebody, no, I could tell somebody I'm going to suspend your child or I'm going to do this or do that. or I'm making a decision that you may not like, but I said it in such a way that it was so hard for people to get mad and keep going off. And in fact, when they were yelling, I started lowering my voice. When they were coming out and they were saying all kinds of things, I would start to lower my voice. Wasn't weak was firm, st still firm today after 33 years doing these jobs. But at the same time, in my response, I came across with grace and with salt, with grace and with salt. And my secretary said to me, she said, you know, Mr. Davis, before you came here to work, people would leave the office jumping on the counter, screaming, hollering, cussing, and they walk out of your office. Some of them are laughing when they walk out of your office. And I said, you know what? It's all about the approach. Is all about the approach. Is all about not letting them in how they behave cause you to respond negatively. So walking and speaking matters. It just doesn't matter in the workplace. It matters in your home. It matters among your children, your grandchildren. It matters among the saints in the church. Lord, help us to walk and speak correctly. Lord, help us to walk and speak correctly. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious God, I say thank you this morning. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Hey, God, thank you for strength. Thank you for divine protection. God, you covered us. Oh, God, you continue to cover us. Lord, you continue to keep us, oh God, under the banner of your will. And God, we say thank you this morning. I thank you just for, oh God, being able to live and waking up and getting prepared and being able to know what to do and how to do it. Lord, I thank you for my right mind today. I thank you for everything you have done in my life. And God, I thank you right now for salvation, for grace, for forgiveness. I thank you right now for redemption, for power. I thank you right now for healing in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters who have joined me from all over the world. God, we've come together to pray today. And God, somebody that I'm praying with right now is experiencing stress. I don't know where it's come from, but Lord, in my spirit, I heard the stress. I felt the stress. And God, as I'm praying today, I want you to relieve that stress. God, I want you to remove the source of it. Lord, the headaches. Oh, God. Oh, God, the chest pains. My God. Hallelujah, Lord. The sleepless nights. God, remove whatever the source of the stress is, whatever the source of the fear or the worry. God, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. And God, I'm praying for whatever the cause of the stress is, that God, you would deal deal with the cause and you would deal with the effects. Lord, whatever is plaguing and bothering somebody this morning, God, I'm praying for your relief. Oh, Shakaye, your relief right now upon their lives. God, strengthen them now. I'm praying for every request that they have. I'm praying for miracles to be released. Unexpected favor, my God, to be exemplified now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, sin. Oh, God, help from thy sanctuary. My God, strengthen out of Zion. Lord, so many are praying for their loved ones. God, touch them, children, grandchildren. Oh, God, friends, loved ones, nieces, nephews, whatever they are to them. God, we know that you can deliver. So, God, stretch out your hand, stretch out your mighty hand of deliverance, and God, do it today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, do it for somebody, my God, right now. God, we're praying today for every name that is on the prayer list, every name in the prayer book, every person in the chat. Even those that have not been mentioned, God, we lift them up before you now. God, we're praying today hallelujah. We're praying today for James Harrell. We're praying for the grandchildren and grandchildren. We're praying for Mother Wilson's children and grandchildren. We're praying for the Jones family, the Amerson family, the Watson family, the Mingo family, the Williams family, the Scott family, the Wells family. We're praying for Tommy and Tamara today. We're praying for Evelyn Johnson, for the Joseph family. God, remember Bishop and Mother Joseph and God, their entire family. Oh God, faithful people. God, bless them in the name of Jesus. We're praying for Jesse. 
We're praying for Cleveland, for Chris, for Trina, for Hezekiah. We're praying for postal workers. God, their protection and their strength. We're praying for Evelyn Johnson, for Quinn, for Corey, for Monica Young and her family, for the Abbott family, for Gloria Smith, for Shanetta. We're praying for Henry. We're praying for Stephen Graves today. We're praying for the Graves and Lynn family. We're praying for Tyasia, for Elmo Johnson. We're praying for Tanya Austin and her family. Oh God, we're praying for the Rock family, the May family, the Green family. We're praying for Beth Howard today. We're praying for the Dickinson family. We're praying for the Emmanuel Church, Temple Church family. We're praying for the Bible Way Church of Roanoke, Virginia, the Bible Way Church of Augusta, Georgia. We're praying for Yvonne Fuller. We're praying for intercessors, Lord, people who pray for others. Lord, we're praying for them this morning. We're praying for Mary Johnson, for Damien, for Darius, for Ashley, for Pam, for Monty. We're praying for Garland today. We're praying for Alice Pru, for Carol Harrell. We're praying for Michelle, for Ramel, for Tasia, for Nicholas. God, we're praying for Carol and her family. We're praying for orphans and widows. God, we're lifting up Betsy today. God, we're praying for the incarcerated everywhere. God, we're praying for Kevin Nash, for Sister Dion. We're praying, my God, for, for spiritual leaders. My God, everywhere. We're praying for college students. We're praying for Deacon and Sister Graves today. We're praying for those, once again, who are under stress. God, we're praying for Mother Pauline Wilkins and her family. We're praying for Annette Hooten. We're praying for Ann King, for Joe Giles. We're praying for the Robertson family. We're praying for Patricia Link and her family. We're praying for backsliders. We're praying for Charles, for Shawnette. We're praying for Devin, for Siobhan, for Skylar, for Sarah. We're praying for Roy Harrison today. We're praying for the Williams children and grandchildren. God, in every name that is on the prayer list, every name that's on in the prayer book, every name that's in the chat, God, we're lifting them up before you, trusting and believing, God, that you are a deliverer. You are a savior. You are a reclaimer of backsliders, God. You are able to deliver right now. God, destroy every yoke, every work of the enemy. Oh, God, there's a foot in the lives of these people. God, deliver right now in the name of Jesus. God, stretch out your mighty hand. Oh, God, touch and move by your power. Let your mighty blood prevail today in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying for the healing of of the sick everywhere. My God, we're lifting up Melvin Peters. We're praying for Alan, for Barbara, for Al. We're praying for Jennifer. We're lifting up Bishop Alfonso Brooks. We're praying for people who are suffering from post-COVID issues. We're praying for Brooke, for Mario, for Darren Strickland. We're praying for Mr. Messer. We're praying for Mother Gentry. Oh God, we're praying, oh God, for the Gentry family. We're praying for Quasi Keller, for Alan, for Little Tierra. We're praying for Lisa Daughtry. We're praying, my God, for Sister Shirley. We're praying for Mother Garvey, Mother Raya. We're praying for the Allen family. We're praying for Edith Green today. God, we're praying for Kendra, for Zan. We're praying for Francis Long Jr. We're praying for Dexter Martin. We're praying, oh God, for Jean Harrell Long. We're praying for Joy Chapman today. We're praying for Norman Davis, for Aiden today. Lord, touch that little boy's body. We're praying for Dr. Michael Bunch today. We're praying for Keith Wolford. We're praying for Kathy Birch today. We're praying, oh God, for Sister Spellman. My God, we know that you're a healer and a deliverer now. So God, stretch out your hand today to heal. God, we're lifting up hey, Shatana Mosa. Oh God, we're lifting up Mother Shirley Clark today. We're praying for Mother. Oh God, oh, we're praying for Mother Evangeline Jenkins. We're praying my God for Mother Elizabeth Allen. God, we're praying, oh God, for Mother Elizabeth Wilson today. God, we're praying today, God. Oh Shandiara Mosata for Lady Andrea Maxwell. We're praying for Pastor Dykes, Pastor Carr, Pastor Jackson. God, thank you for what you're doing for these men of God. Lord, continue that healing process. We're praying, oh God, for Elder Tyson. We're praying for Elder Smith today. We're praying for Brother Wiggins, my God. We're praying, my God, for Brother and Mother Sherrod. We're praying, hallelujah, for Deacon and Mother Garland today. God, we're praying, my God, for Mother Foster, Henry J, Brother Cliff. We're praying for Mother Tanaj. We're praying for Mother Holman today. We're praying for Sister Simmons. God, let your healing virtue flow everywhere. God, touch everywhere. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we're praying for Cynthia, for Catherine today. Oh God, we're praying for Duchess, Lord, that your healing virtue, oh God, might do the work. We're lifting up, Lord, cancer patients. We're praying for kidney patients. Remember Maurice today. Remember Marlette today, God. Remember Chris Wright today. God, touch because we know that you are indeed a healer. God, we're praying. Oh, Shatiana Bosiatanaye. We're praying, my God, for healing to go to hospitals, to nursing homes, to rehab centers. 
visitors, to cancer wars, to COVID wars, to ICU wars. God, let your healing virtue flow. You are the bomb in Gilead. God, you are the great physician, and we trust you for healing now. We trust you to touch healing and deliver right now. God, we're praying for grieving families everywhere. We're lifting up the Moore family, the Phillips family, the Parker family. We're praying for Sister Glean's cousin. We're praying for Diana Williams today. We're praying for the Terry family, for the Giotti family. We're praying for Levi and the Byers family. We're praying for Sister Taisha Scott today, for the Allen family. God, I'm lifting up Pastor Susie Wright, oh God, and her entire family in the loss of her mother. God, I'm praying for Roberta Jenkins today. I'm praying for, oh God, Sister Grace Gentry and her entire family. God, we're lifting up grieving families, my God, everywhere, all over the globe, Father. People are grieving the loss of loved ones. God, we're praying for the Allen family today. Oh God, we're praying for the Eisler family, the Griffith family, the family of our U.S. troops that were killed in Afghanistan, the Spell family, the Dickens family, Sister Lee, oh God, the family of Carol Griffith. We're praying, my God, for Sister Carr, for Sister Ward, for Pastor Shaw and his family and the Cornerstone Church family. We're praying for Tom today, God. We're praying for the Barnwell family. We're praying for Cheryl Ann Phillips. We're praying for Miss Johnson, for the Walker family, the Wilson family, the Brown family, the Stokes family. God, we're praying for the Pergamon Church. Oh God, we're praying, my God, for the Dunlaps, for the Mays, for the Goddess, for the Hackett's. We're praying, oh God, for Pastor Black and his family. We're praying for the Moultries. We're praying for Brandy Harrison today. We're praying for God, the Macedonia Church family, the Ephron family. We're praying for my dear friend Katrina. Lord, touch and strengthen. We're praying for the Crider family. We're praying for Sam today, the Ford family. Sister Maxine, we're praying for Pastor Joseph Moore. We're praying for the Petito family. God, every grieving family. We're praying for the Allen Williams family. God, strengthen and continue to strengthen Trell and Ryan. We're praying, my God, for the Clark. Strengthen, my God, Tommy and Michelle. God, we're praying, oh, hallelujah, oh, God, for the Boodrams, the Mannix, the Sapatas, the Felix families. God, touch and strengthen them now. We're praying, my God, for the Taylors, the Lloyds. We're praying for the Allens today, God. We're praying, my God, oh, God, for the Brian Hopkins family. God, we're praying for so many that are grieving today. We're praying, oh, God, for the Gary Porter family. We're praying for the McLean Melvin family. God, every grieving soul, every widow, every widower, every grieving child, every grieving parent, every grieving loved one. God, give them strength. Give them peace. Give them grace. Oh, God, they can only come from you. Sustain them and hold them up. God, deliver from depression and despair now. In the name of the Bynum family, God, do it today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, I'm praying for the entire body of Christ. I'm praying for every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. I'm praying for every bishop and elder, every first lady, every, oh God, pastor's child, every mother and missionary, every minister and deacon, every young person in the church. God, every musician, singer, and psalmist, every believer everywhere. God, I'm lifting them up now that you would strengthen the body of Christ. Oh God, so many are under stress, but God, strengthen us now. Oh God, lift us now. God, strengthen right now. Empower the church. Send revival into every congregation. Lord, today in worship, oh God, breathe on us. Breathe on us, God, with your power, with your anointing. Breathe on us, God, with your delivering power. Breathe on us, God, until yokes are destroyed and lives are changed. Oh God, breathe on us until we walk and speak as you would have us walk and speak. God, I pray today for first responders and essential workers everywhere. I pray for teachers and students. I pray your continued protection and covering of oh God upon school employees. I pray for hospital employees, God, that you would cover them, that you would protect them, God, from the custodian to the CEO, every doctor, nurse, technician, orderly, oh God, worker in the hospital. God, cover them now. Lord, we pray for the nations today. I lift up Trinidad Tobago. I pray, my God, for Jamaica. I pray for St. Lucia, for St. Kitts, for the Dominican Republic, for Grenada, for Canada. I pray, oh God, for the nations of Africa. I pray, my God, for the entire world. Oh God, because the world is sick. Oh God, not just with COVID, but with, oh God, sick with all forms of disease. Sick with hatred. Sick with malice. Sick with racism. Oh God, sick with division. But God, we're trusting you to use the church to heal the land. Help us to stay at the altar of repentance. Help us to stay 
before your throne. And as we stay there, God, you help us to live and to do your will. God, bless and strengthen us today in the name of Jesus. Bless the worship today everywhere. Bless the people today everywhere. And God, send out Ashanama, miracle signs and wonders. Oh, God, unexpected favor. Let it fall upon the people today. God, bless us, Lord God. And we give your name the glory. My God, the honor and the praise in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Come on, everybody. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Everybody give God praise. Everybody. Everybody give the Lord praise. He is indeed worthy. My God. Hallelujah of our praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah of our praise. Hallelujah. This is Hallelujah. My declaration today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I am going to walk and speak right. Hallelujah. I know that may not be that might be a little grammatically challenged, but it, it says what I, what's in my spirit. I'm going to walk and speak right. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk and speak right in such a way that even the people that are outside of the ark of safety can see Christ in me by how I walk, by how I speak, so that he is exemplified in my life. I want God to be glorified in me. I want God to be glorified, my Lord, in me. And how can he be glorified except those who claim to know him walk and speak in righteousness, in integrity, in spiritual fortitude, doing the things that are pleasing to almighty God. That's what's going to make the difference, saints. And I believe this, hallelujah, it was in my spirit to say to all of you today that you've got unsaved children, you've got unsaved lovers, you've got people that, that, that you are concerned about their souls. God is going to save them. Just keep walking and speaking correctly in front of them. Hallelujah. Just keep walking and speaking correctly in front of them. Keep walking and speaking correctly in your daily life. And they're going to see Christ and come to Christ because you know Jesus Christ. God bless you today. Thank you so very much for joining us. I trust that the prayer has been a blessing to you and that hallelujah and thank you. And the word has blessed you as well today. You can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day long. This is Sunday, and so we will be at the church. Our Sunday school will take place at 10 a.m. Morning worship will take place at 11.30, live from the Sanctuary of Refuge Temple, and you can be blessed by the word today. I'm going to continue the message that I started last Sunday, the cost of compromise, all right? The cost of compromise, so you don't want to miss that. If you're at home and able to watch it, or you can watch it later, watch that message, all right? Watch that message. You can also join us this evening at 6 o'clock for the gathering. We're continuing in December discipleship. And tonight we're going to talk about God because what you know about God influences your walk with him and your discipleship. So join us this evening at six o'clock for that wonderful dialogue Bible study with the gathering. Um, you can stay connected through our podcast, Google podcast, Apple podcast, SoundCloud and Spotify. You can stay connected because this prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Hallelujah. And you can stay connected there. And so we thank God for you. Monday through Friday, you can enjoy our radio broadcast that airs <coughs> at www gregorygospel.com Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. Look, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank everybody for your continued support. Thank you yesterday for being a blessing in our anniversary of one year of prayer. And we thank God and appreciate all of you that sold and seeded. And we thank God for you. And if you want to be a blessing, you can do so at Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can give electronically through our website, Refuge Temple in c.com refuge temple in is in north c is in carolina.com you can give also through the givelify app if you have that just type in refuge temple burlington you'll see the picture of the church and know you're in the right place and make your gift or you can give through our cash app that is dollar sign the number one refuge i thank you for your support but i thank you most of all for so many of you that share your day with us each day i want to give a special shout out because it slipped me yesterday and i don't want to just get by to district elder 
and Lady Jorge Alde. They are such a blessing to morning prayer. They have encouraged others to join the prayer. They have reached out to people, and I appreciate them so very much. Thank God for them. They hail from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, From and we thank God for them and for their support and for the support of those from Pennsylvania who watch every day. We thank God for you joining and being part of this, and we love the fellowship. So please keep praying for me. Keep praying for Lady Davis. Keep praying for our children. Keep praying for my father. Keep praying for, hallelujah, my siblings, my entire family. Keep praying for Refuge Temple in Burlington, that God would keep blessing us. And keep praying for all the churches, all the churches with which we're connected, that God would continue to show his favor, that God would continue to strengthen and encourage us to carry on the work of God. Look, have a fabulous Fabulous Sunday. God bless each of you. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. Shalom, shalom.